About five years ago, just in a single moment of blood and dust and chaos, I found myself pinned under a vehicle. I looked down and I saw that my whole body had changed. That month ended with the amputation of my leg. After the operation, all of a sudden I started feeling this unbelievably intense, excruciating pain in a part of my body that no longer existed. To feel something so strongly in the air that you can't quite touch, you can't nurture with your own hands is both terrifying and profound, <laughs> you know? I met Albert for the first time in my outpatient clinic several weeks after he had been discharged from surgery. He had already gone out to use psychedelics on at least one occasion in an attempt to treat the pain. And he came back and described it in ways that most pain patients don't describe an analgesic. He said that it had completely eliminated his pain for several hours. As somebody who treats chronic pain on a regular basis, almost nothing that we use as a therapeutic agent eliminates pain, especially when the pain is severe like his was, and especially when it's chronic. And the amazing thing about it was that the pain never came back. You know, the, the feeling of electric shocks to the foot every few seconds just went away. It was incredibly exciting for me as a physician to think that there was an agent that we never thought about as an analgesic that could potentially have such profound results. The Psychedelics and Health Research Initiative at UCSD has four primary aims. The first is therapeutics. Can we demonstrate efficacy with a variety of disorders, looking specifically at pain? Second, can we demonstrate mechanisms? Can we uncover how psychedelics work in the brain and in the body? The third is training medical professionals, researchers, so that we have more people in the field who are able to work with these in research and clinical practice. And the fourth is collaborating with other institutions that are also doing research using these compounds. For me, as someone who has studied these compounds uh, from a basic science, neuroscience perspective, primarily in animal research, it's extremely gratifying to see this work come to fruition in the sense that it has an impact on clinical care. One of the most exciting things about being a neuroscientist at UC San Diego is the collaborative and interdisciplinary nature of our scientific endeavors, especially in the case of psychedelics. I'm really fascinated by the psychological mechanisms of psychedelics because they're really working on two levels. One is the physiological, the effect of the compound in the brain and the body. But the other is that people tell us they change their stories about themselves, about others, about the world and their relationship to it. The current thinking of how psychedelics work in patients suffering from chronic pain is threefold. There is an anti-inflammatory effect, they upregulate genes related to neuroplasticity, and also leverage descending inhibition uniquely in patients who've had nerve injury. As a rehabilitation physician, I meet patients who have just had the worst thing in their whole lives happen to them. So spinal cord injuries, brain injuries, strokes, amputations, burns. My whole approach is to integrate as many tools in my clinical toolbox as I can to help treat these people comprehensively and holistically. So my laboratory is interested in the pharmacology of psychedelic drugs, and we're interested in three main focuses. So we're interested in the receptor interactions that are driving the response, and what are the structure activity relationships that govern those interactions. So once the receptor is activated, what are the second messenger pathways that are driving the response? And then finally, what brain circuits are involved in the effects of psychedelics? And learning that will allow us to potentially improve their effects and to design new drugs that have uh, uh, better qualities and reduced side effects. For one, we want to appreciate the dosage that is needed to elicit a long-lasting effect. We want to appreciate how long the effect lasts. And more importantly, we're really curious about the mechanisms supporting the feasibility, safety, and efficacy of these traditional psychedelics. I'm also very excited that 
what we're doing here in the Psychedelics and Health Research Initiative at UCSD is bringing to bear the amazing multidisciplinary toolkit that UCSD's science program provides. In that deep, altered state, I was able to let go of the resistance to this thing that was my altered body and accept it somehow. Even within a few months after that, I was skiing, I was hiking, I was back to my regular life, and I was existing in a state of regrowth rather than suffering. So I'm very grateful.